Everyone wants to be successful. If you're a psychotherapist, you want to have the maximum number of customers possible. If you're an actor, you want to play in as many movies as possible. And if you're a businessman, you want to make the largest amount of money possible. Now, more and more people on the internet are going to tell you that anyone can become successful, that anyone can make it if they want it bad enough. We hear about self-made millionaires and billionaires, people that work their way up from nothing by virtue of their talent and efforts. And according to some people, we can do the same. With enough hard work and will, we can get the skills and the mindset that is required to succeed. But this is an overly optimistic belief. Behind every success story lies hidden advantages and extraordinary opportunities that allow the people that got successful to get where they are. Opportunities that few people have, and yet they are required to succeed. As Malcolm Gladwell has put it in his book, Outliers, the tallest oak in the forest is the tallest not just because it grew from the hardiest acorn, it is the tallest also because no other trees blocked its sunlight. The soil around it was deep and rich. No rabbit chewed through its bark as a sapling, and no lumberjack cut it down before it matured. If you ask a professional hockey player how they managed to reach the NHL, the National Hockey League in North America, they'll probably mention the great coaches they had, their determination or their work ethic. But what they might not mention, it's how lucky they were to be born in January. In many years, 40% of hockey players selected into top tier leagues were born between January and March, 30% between April and June, 20% between July and September, and only 10% were born between October and December. The reason for this discrepancy is supposedly due to the cutoff date for kids' hockey leagues, which is on January 1st. Those kids born in the first part of the year are a little older than kids born later that year. And who tends to be the best player at age 8, 9, or 10? The oldest one. When you're at such a young age, extra months of physical maturity means a lot. And at that age, coaches start to select players. And so they're more likely to view as talented and bigger and more coordinated players those that had the benefit of critical extra months of maturity. These players are going to get more time on the ice, practicing twice as much as, or even three times more, than they would have otherwise. They would get to play in more tournaments and get better coaches, leading to a significant increase in the player's skill in the long run. So, the hockey players that made it to the professional level deserve credit for their hard work, but they worked hard only because they were given the opportunity to do so, because they were a little better in skill thanks to their age an opportunity that they never deserved nor earned. These kinds of hidden opportunities you can meet in any successful story. Take, for example, Bill Gates' story. Bill Gates was, for many years, the richest person in the world. In 1968, when Bill was 13, he got unlimited access to a computer terminal. To put that into perspective, in 1968, most college professors in computer science did not have unlimited access to a computer terminal. There were few computers around and were so expensive and so rare and programming was so complex that it was something you can master only after decades. In 1968, no one in the world, let alone a teenager, had the same kind of access to a computer like he did. All of that means that by the time that he was 20, he already had over 10,000 hours of practice. So when he started his company, Microsoft, at the time when the personal computer revolution hit, he was way ahead of anyone else. Again, Bill deserves acknowledgement because he was able to capitalize on the opportunity that he had through his hard work and perseverance. But you cannot dismiss the implication that luck had in his success. The professional hockey players get successful over their peers thanks to their birthday. And Bill Gates thanks to his opportunity of getting more access to a computer terminal than any other human in the world. If you look closely, the most decisive factor in these stories was the opportunities they got, not their hard work. The work they had put in was important, but there were many more people in the world that worked just as hard, but didn't get successful because they didn't get the same opportunities. Unfortunately, luck plays a more important role in our life than we would like to admit. And it may seem depressing that our life is so heavily influenced by something that we have no control over. But that's not entirely true because we can do something about it. We can increase our chances of getting lucky by putting ourselves in the right environment. Maybe we cannot change the date of our birth, but we might be able to change our surroundings. The opportunities that you need to achieve your desired goals might just lay in a different environment than your current one. 
For example, about half of the differences in income across people worldwide is explained by their country of residence and by the income distribution within that country. So if you want to become a billionaire, your chances will be much higher if you live in the US than if you live in Ethiopia. The same goes for winning gold medals at the Olympic Games. The United States has won more gold medals than any other country in the world. So if you live in the US, your chances of winning a gold medal will be way higher. Elon Musk realized this fact, that some environments offer more opportunities than others do, and so he decided to do something about it. Elon was born in South Africa, and from a young age he wanted to escape from his surroundings and dreamed of a place that would allow his personality and dreams to flourish. He saw America as a land of opportunity, and the most likely stage for making his dreams a reality. And so when he got older, he moved to the US. Now he is one of the richest people on the planet and runs companies very well known around the world. Could he have done the same if he remained in South Africa? Very unlikely. If you haven't been given the opportunities that could put you on the path to success, it could be because in the environment that you're in, there are not a lot of opportunities. Take Franz Schrepp's story as an example. Franz Schrepp tells a story in his TED talk in which he went to nightclubs with his friends to drink and meet women because he thought that he should be the prime place to meet women. Unfortunately for him and his friends, they weren't successful at meeting women in nightclubs. And it's not surprising. Not because he wasn't good enough, but that in an average German nightclub, there are 80% men and 20% women. There is a massive oversupply of men, which leads to greater competition and less success. In the end, he managed to solve the problem. How? His mother signed him up for standard dancing lessons. In this new environment that he was in, there, there was, was a, a room. room full of women, such an oversupply, such a high demand for a guy like me. So little men, so little supply. It was like a supermarket with more customers and products. If you haven't yet succeeded, it may not be because you didn't work enough or because you didn't have the necessary skills, but maybe it's because you weren't and you were not in an environment that can give you opportunities. The reason Franz Schrepp didn't find a girl wasn't because he wasn't good enough, but that he was in the wrong environment, which might be the case for you as well. And like he did, you might be able to change your environment too, so that you could grow your chances of meeting the opportunities you need to succeed. By environment, we don't mean just your country, but also your city, neighborhood, the company you work for, or your group of people. It's up to you to find an environment that could give you the opportunities you need to achieve your desired goals.